Now, celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville, a local show with a spotlight on the 904 with hosts Eden Kendall and Mark Payton, featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Welcome to River City Live and happy Monday. I hope you guys at home had a great weekend. Did you guys have a good weekend? Not so much. Not so much. Really? Yeah, I had some uh, mental issues that were tearing me down a little week. So I did a lot of Netflix and chilling, but yeah. Netflix and chilling. Yeah, so I mean, other than that, I mean, so that part of the weekend was good. What about Gosh, you, Eden? I feel terrible saying it was maybe one of the best weekends I've had in <laughs> ages. A little bit of everything I love. Did some art projects with my daughter, did a, uh, a drive-by uh, viewing of my son on his lifeguard chair at the beach on so my spying. bike. Spying. spying. I called it a drive-by it viewing. Like it yeah. but, uh, and then ran in a 5K. I mean, everything I love happened all this weekend. It was fantastic. What yeah. about you? You know, uh, the same old, you know, that I usually have. The one thing that was nice was the kids didn't have any sports activities, so I felt like I had more of a weekend. But you know what's weird? I always fall victim to this. When you don't have things planned, I'm not as productive as I would like to be. Okay. Do you guys That's have that? Like when I'm busy, yes. I carve out time. So, you know, with the weekend, you know, you figure Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, I really wanted to, when I say I, we, my wife and I, we wanted to kind of get the house in order and clean. And what it looked like on Friday is pretty much what it looked like this morning when I left. <laughs> I think that for every, like, step forward we take in cleaning, we take a step back, like, in an hour. Or, I don't know if you guys have this problem, too, maybe just because we're messy people at home, one room will get clean, and then the other one, like, next to whatever, will just fall apart because it's kind of like everything gets pushed into that room. That or you, like, get clean, and then the young ones are like, oh, I discovered this, and they go back through and just destroy all your hard work. Yeah, and it's just amazing because, you know, you figure in a 48-hour time period, you should be able to manage your time and actually get something done. We have failed, but I found a list online okay. that kind of helps to structure you know, time. But yeah, before you get to that, I would say this, though. I think we spend a lot of time figuring out how to control the time during the week, during the work week, and we're never thinking about controlling the time on the weekend when it comes to our personal lives. And I think, you know, a lot of times it's like, you know, with you, you got caught up just with Netflix. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You find something to do and then just eats up the time because it's, it's your time. Oh, yeah. So, like, here's a list. I'm just going to go over four of them, but it's kind of funny because I fall, you know, I fail every one of these. I just, I can't oh. do them. So okay. the first one is create a plan and then work the plan. See, I don't do this. <laughs> but you create a plan, don't you? Don't you say on a Friday, this is what's going to happen? It's just the working the plan. So my wife, Jamie, does, and this is what's kind of funny. The first thing she puts on the list is something she's already done so she could mark it off right away. No, she does Oh, not. totally. She is that person. so brilliant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it makes her feel good. She's like, well, this one's already done. I'm like, then why are you putting it on there? Just leave me alone. And then she puts it on there. You know, so what's the saying? If you, uh, if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. Exactly. I've never heard that before, but I will keep that in mind. I've heard so, it. It just hasn't sunk in yet. So on a weekend, <laughs> or I mean, anytime on the weekend, like maybe map out a plan Friday night. We're going to do this, this, and this. And we actually do that. Doesn't, That's good. Yeah. Doesn't always get accomplished. Always, but, but, you know, there are opportunities. At least you have it in mind. Right, exactly. And, and I think when you put something on paper or any place, then it, it's more real, mm -hmm. right, than just an idea. Um, here's one that's really hard to do, and it's on this list. Only do your job. Don't do other people's jobs because then you're not going to be efficient at yours. Huh. But when you're a parent, it's hard to do. You have a lot of different oh. jobs as right. well. But I understand what they're saying, though, because you could focus on things a lot more when it's just you. Tunnel okay, vision. so my question is this. Say you give the little one a job. This is your job. And they don't do that job. And then I end up picking up the slack <laughs> for them in that job. Who's learning from this experience? Is she she is on how to manipulate you. Yeah, she's totally learning <laughs> from this experience. I, so how do I work that angle? Don't I mean, do you, her job. So you've got the, so yours, as they were growing up, you're like, this is your job, and then if you don't do it... Then you lose something. Ooh, okay. You take All away right. something. Do you remember, we talked about this about a week ago. That's really the essence of spoiling a kid. It's not showering yes. them with gifts. Right. It's not letting them know about the the consequences that they have. Mm. You know, so but I'm guilty of it too, right? Yeah, like yeah. My kids like yeah, they know how to hustle me and, <laughs> and everything. Another one is create a schedule. So you talk about a plan, but the schedule is the actual time mm -hmm. frame to do that in. You know, again, uh, this one I don't do as well. <laughs> you know, that's why again my house is just as messy as Monday as it was on Friday night. And then uh, this one is common sense too. Do one thing at a time. And this, I mean, it makes a lot of sense with anything in life. 
Do something, knock it off the list, and be done with it. How many times you start a project, you don't finish it, you do something else, and that one never gets finished? Oh, so I'm I, so guilty of that. I start off cleaning the closet, and I've got a good run. I'm like, well, I'm going to move this into whatever room. I walk in there. Oh, well, I'm going to start. The, what's you guys are? We're always talking about. Hey, squirrel! So, yeah, the door. <laughs> it's called the doorway effect, and it's a real thing. When you walk through the doorway, you your mind resets. So the minute you pass underneath that arch. You're on to something else. Oh, yeah. You gotta, stay, you gotta stay still. Put it by the door and don't take it out of the room. Well, and I think that's the trap we fall into with the weekends. There's other stimuli yes. that's happening, so you might have something. And I know you're gonna do something on this later, but your art project that you did, yeah. right? So, like, that's a focus. You know what I mean? Then there's probably other right. things that you were doing that kind of pushed to the side. But then I kept saying, eh, I think I need to let this coat of paint dry. And then I would just leave and go do something like sit in the sun and just for <laughs> weed. And spy on your little boy. But it got done. It got done. What about like when you're, you're working on something and something's on TV, you've just got it in the background and white noise, like, I'm just going to sit here for a second, catch my breath, and next you know, an hour's gone. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, well. But some would argue that's what the weekend is for. That's, I'm that's true. You. And you need that. So I guess mm -hmm. it was therapeutic to not be productive on my weekend. <laughs> now, when it comes to having good ideas, this is interesting. This is all about science. There is one spot in your house that really helps you to generate your best thinking. Oh, yeah. It's the shower. So there's this uh, part of your brain that always, is always searching for unconscious ideas that you otherwise wouldn't notice. And when you're in the shower, you're relaxed. You're not really. Most times you're not really thinking that hard on anything, and so some of these unconscious ideas start popping up. So that's when a lot of us come up with some of our best ideas. I've heard of uh, entrepreneurs who keep notepads. Well, one, on their, their nightstand when they sleep, but in the shower, or well, not in the shower, but outside the shower. When I was doing music, I'd be in the shower, I'd come up with some of the best riffs and lyrics. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. As soon as I turn the water off, that, Gone. Door, that oh, doorway wow. effect. Yeah. Doorway. Mm -hmm. Gone. So, yeah, so if you're in the shower, just let your mind flow. Let the ex thoughts expand. So all the times that you stare at your cons computer screen and you're just like, what is going on? And as soon as you walk away, it pops into mind. So embrace it. You know what I'd heard? This isn't the same and yet very different. The things that are stressful, the problems that you need to sort out, we may have even talked about it here. I don't know where I heard it. Maybe I heard it from us. <laughs> but that when you're running or exercising, that that's a good time to try to solve the issues that would totally, stress yeah. you out. Because you're not going to, your body won't get all uptight and stressed, and then you can kind of reason through things yeah. in that way. It's your, so, your yeah. unconscious mind that's actually solving the problem. So you're, yeah, you're re, refocusing. What you, you got going on right? there? I, I am uh, just readjusting myself. Uh, I thought you were ready to go into the shower. <laughs> I, was like, I see some of going on. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on, Rance. We don't need your good ideas yet. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. But then uh, I have been in our pod, and a lot of times my good ideas are awful ideas, as evidenced by the uh, back and forth I get from producer Abigail and Justin. So I'm still a work in progress. Feedback. So can we put a shower in our pod, and then I will be greatness? Yeah, no, no. let's just do your shower. Head, guys. <laughs> let's, let's, as much as we appreciate your, your good ideas and your creativity, <laughs> there are certain things you should do on your own time. Okay, okay. <laughs> like keep showering. that in mind. I'll keep that so in when mind. You talk about ideas. I think this is a pretty genius idea when it comes to marketing, and it has to do with our jumbo shrimp. Well, here's the deal. I was always a big fan of the name, the jumbo shrimp, and for the people that were haters, I saw a shirt this weekend haters. with the jumbo, jumbo shrimp, and it said, haters gonna hate. And for those people, think about what they did. They got everyone talking, right? So this idea, whether or not they're really going to do this, it is legitimately up on their website, on their schedule, a couple of days before Father's Day. It's you might be the Father's Day. In, <laughs> in honor of you might be the Father's Day, the Jumbo Shrimp will be distributing pregnancy tests so you'll know if you need to return for Sunday's Father's Day game. <laughs> the River City Live logo right there is a kind yes. of like knocking that part off. Right. But that's exactly where it says it. It says yeah. it will be an evening filled with suspense, intrigue, and manila envelopes. <laughs> oh, but no. I remember back when some of those shows were, you know, that... Our, our big focal points are those. You get in a, you'd hear somebody's like, "Oh yeah, I got an invite to go to Chicago for this or whatever." I'm sorry, I love what the Jumbo Shrimp are, are doing. I'm probably gonna have to skip that game. 
or not me personally, but somebody might want to reconsider going that game just in case <laughs> they're like... Attendance might be down just in well, case for some unexpected dads now, out there. Remember, they're not DNA testing anybody at this game. They're mm. just simply saying they're going to hand out some pregnancy tests. Whether they really do or not, it doesn't matter. It's still brilliant. It still has people talking. It's still, as you just saw, made its way on TV. So these are the kinds of ideas that I love about minor league baseball. I think yeah. that there are so many of these fun nights that they do that are just so ridiculous and so much fun. So Well, let's keep talking about a brilliant idea. And this is one about a local hospital here that they're using music to help kids out with therapy. Oh, yeah. So innovation in medicine ensures that patients get the best possible care. Wilson Children's launched a music therapy program that helps in recovery in a number of different ways. Adding the innovation of a digital stethoscope has taken that recovery process to another level. Wilson Children's has incorporated new techniques to aid in their patients' care. Music therapy is an allied health profession, and so we're looking at their physical and emotional goals while they're here in the hospital. So it's not about them being musicians, but it's about meeting their medical needs through a medium such as music. Music therapy works on multiple levels. The doctors will walk in and they'll say this is great work for their lungs. This is wonderful for their pain management. And so we're using that music to give them that outlet and that opportunity to release some of their fears, to release some of their pain, to express themselves in a way that doesn't use medicine. To further enhance the experience, Julie has incorporated the use of a digital stethoscope. It records a patient's heartbeat. What we're able to do with the digital stethoscope is to give them an opportunity to take away a positive moment, to take away something that they created. Um, it may be siblings writing a song together and layering both of their heartbeats. It might be an infant who was born here and hasn't gone home yet, or our teenagers who have been trying to express what it's like being here in the hospital. Oh, I left out an important part. Patients are able to mix their heartbeat into whatever song they choose. They really get into it. They love having, making it their own. Um, in the hospital, a lot of opportunities, they don't get a choice over things. They don't have necessarily a choice of what medicines to take or where they can go. They might be in their room for the tired treatment. And so in music, we're able to give them lots of opportunities for choice, lots of opportunity to personalize it just for them. Sebastian had no idea what Julie was planning, but once he learned the specifics... I thought it was cool. Because yeah. I never knew that you can use that machine to, for the heartbeat and put it in the music. And Raven loves it as well. Um, it's a great thing to have. Uh, it's very calming. It takes your mind up off of why you're in here. Julie explains other benefits that come from utilizing music therapy in a patient's recovery. So with Sebastian following surgery, what we want to do is activate his lungs so that pneumonia does not set in. And singing is a great way. One of his doctors came in and was seeing him work so hard through singing and said, this is a wonderful way for you to exercise your lungs while you're here. And so we're elevating their mood, but we're also looking at their tolerance to activity during their singing, during their engagement with music creation as well. Having them out of bed, because if we're staying in bed, we're not as active, and then we have muscle atrophy. While I proclaim Julie an inspiration for the work she's doing, she has a different perspective. I think that our patients are. They go through so much, and they're smiling to, to see the joy on Raven, to see the joy in Sebastian. They're amazing. They teach me about life. They show me the things to love and to be thankful for. I'm Rance Adams for River City Live. That's such a cool story. Oh, and it's such a great program. And as always, she's the only one doing it there at the hospital. So, you know, she's stretched very thin. So they would appreciate anybody that would help uh, donate. And maybe they could bring in another body and expand the program even more. The kids love it. So, you know, all of that is going on. If you want to know more, go to RiverCityLiveTV.com and click on the Ask CNN RCL tab. That is some good stuff. Hey, we'll be right back.